this higher harmonic of gold is the gold radiation that is shown around the head or the body of highly advanced spiritual initiates or saints in every spiritual tradition around the world. In all these different traditions you will see these religious depictions in art and in other ways that show this uh, gold emanation around the body of the saint. And what the Egyptians make clear is that this is not symbolic, this is quite literal. This is what they call the higher harmonic of gold. And this energy is understood in Egyptian biogeometry to be an emanation from the plane of divine wisdom. And so when you find this particular energy quality in the energy field of the saint, or you can in fact find it in the energy field of any person who is doing sincere prayer or blessing at that moment. In fact, during states of prayer and blessing, you can find all three of these energy components in any person's energy field. And that's something that we explore in some detail in the training. But for this higher harmonic of gold, when the person through their spiritual development has created a resonant link with the plane of divine wisdom, then they get this higher harmonic of gold energy quality. Now in Egyptian biogeometry, they know that this energy quality has a powerful effect on life functions and on the human immune system. It vitalizes the immune system, has a powerful healing effect. One thing I should make clear here is that all three of these energies come together as one totality. So that what we call the BG3, although it has three different identifiable aspects to it, come as one totality. It's like a trinity. The three are one. There are many aspects to the BG3 that are vital to being able to practically use Egyptian biogeometry. I'll just mention one sidelight of it right now, which is that there are particular shapes or movements or particular geometric patterns that can manifest the BG3 as well as prayer and blessing and many other types of practices. I'll give you just one example of this. If you see this form we have right here of the circle with the point in the center, this particular form of sacred geometry you find in virtually every tradition throughout the world. If you look at ancient Egypt, this was the form of Ra'a, the sun god. If you go to the Freemasons or the Rosicrucians, they'll say this is the symbol of the Godhead. If you go to astrology, they'll say it's the symbol of the sun. If you go to alchemy, they'll say it's the symbol of gold. The reality is that there's an energy connected with this shape that is connected to all of those things. Before these things became simply symbolic, they were a living, practical energy science. So one thing we do in the foundation training is we'll give someone just the form of a circle and we'll teach them how to be able to directly detect the BG3. And then we'll say to them, you test this circle and you tell me where you find the BG3 in this form. And they always find the BG3 as a strong emanation in the exact center of the circle. So this form of sacred geometry that is normally described symbolically is actually a teaching diagram that shows you where to find the BG3 in a particular form. In fact, any circular movement will manifest the BG3 energies in its center. And one of the great sayings of biogeometry from Dr. Karim is that the center is a transcendental gateway beyond time and space. We have many ways to access and leverage the energy of the center in Egyptian biogeometry. I'll give you one very simple example. We use a form, many different forms in biogeometry to create specific energies, and one that we call the L has this form here. It's as if you had a right angle and you took out the right angle and instead gave it a quarter circle. So this is not present. If you test this form, it will give you an emanation of the BG3. And then you can use this particular pattern for practical work to create these beneficial energies or to transmute harmful energies into beneficial. Again, there's so much more about this that I'd love to go into detail on with you. But in the time we have, we have to move on to a particular illustration connecting this idea of the BG3 to ancient Egypt. Now, I need to make clear that this concept of the Biogeometry 3, that everyone who does the Biogeometry training learns firsthand, uh, is a living reality that they can directly detect and work with after the training. This information was never made public 
until the work of Dr. Ibrahim Karim. You will not find any other public source that reveals the secret of the BG3. But you can find in the Egyptian mysteries the proving that they knew this energy once you were aware of it. I'll give you an example. In the Egyptian mysteries, there is a netter known as Sekhmet, a lioness goddess. And she is associated with this particular object that we described before as the Waj. This emanates from its tip this spiritual carrier wave. So that, in fact, what they're saying in the Egyptian mythology is that the goddess Sekhmet, the Netter Sekhmet, is connected to this form and to this energy. Now, one thing about it is that in the Egyptian mysteries, they say that Sekhmet, if she is in a benevolent mood, will be the best spiritual guide and protector you ever had. But if she's in a angry, wrathful mood, that she will kill every living thing. And there are blood-curdling tales of Sekhmet bathing in rivers of blood from her victims. So, in other words, they depict Sekhmet as having both a beneficial side and a harmful side. And the same thing with this energy coming from this object related to her in ancient Egypt. It has both a beneficial energy aspect and a detrimental energy aspect. Now, in the Egyptian mythology, they say that Sekhmet has a consort or a husband, and her husband's name is Ptah, and Ptah is usually represented as you see here. Now, instead of having the form of the Waj pendulum that Sekhmet is connected with and which has the spiritual carrier wave coming out of the base, he is connected to the form that's known as the Jed. Now, when you test the base of the Jed, you really don't find these energies coming out of the base. It seems inert. But there's a mystery hidden here, because in the Egyptian mythology, they say that the union of Sekhmet and Ptah gave rise to a child. So in the Egyptian mythology, they describe the way that the union of Sekhmet and Ptah gave rise to a child whose name was Nefertum. Now the name Nefertum means something like the beauty or the fullness of creation. Now the interesting thing about it is that just as in the mythology, when Ptah and Sekhmet are united and they create the fullness of nature, the fullness of creation. So if you take the object that is associated with Sekhmet, the Waj pendulum, and you connect it, you unite it with the form of the Jed and you put the two together, then when you test the base of it, you get all of the BG3 energies from the base. In other words, there is an energy science that is encoded in the knowledge in the Egyptian mythology. And we use this particular energy uh, form today in biogeometry as a way to emanate the BG3 from its base. So this is to illustrate for you this concept that in the Egyptian mysteries they knew how to create the BG3 and work with these energies very precisely. However, we have simply lost that key until Dr. Kareem with his biogeometry has brought that information back to us.